Hello and welcome back to Legend of the Dead. Last time we conquered a couple of titles which allowed us to create the Jarldom of Norland, all the way up here. Which is not necessarily land we were initially looking at, but is very very good for us in terms of stepping up and allowing us to do more things. However, now we have this title, there are some things we need to think about. First and foremost being Succession. Now previously, Succession was fairly easy title of one title went to our son and there were no other titles. That's very easy succession. One title from us went to him. Cool. Now how does it work? Well, the duchy goes to him along with two of the titles in the duchy and the second uh, bit of land will go to our son, which is fine. Ish. I mean, obviously, I think uh, Heisinger is a better character than Ingvar, but if that's the way it has to be, that's the way it has to be. Heisinger would still be our vassal, it would all be fine. The problem comes wh when we look at his son. So, Solvi. Solvi could very easily inherit this title from his grandfather before he inherits the title from his father, right? All effectively that would have to happen is that his father would have to outlive his mother. That's the only thing that would have to happen for this to happen. Now, the problem with that is if his father has a county level title, and he has a county level title, what will happen is that bit of land will go from his father to him, and he will keep his current status. And his current status would be directly underneath his current liege, which right now, I believe, is directly under the King of Sweden. It is not really ideal. We would much prefer to keep that land directly underneath us so that taxes and levies are paid to us. Now, how can we fix this? Well, there are a couple of ways of th fixing this. First of all, we could make it so that that scenario... Oh, I accidentally clicked on our vassal. We could make it so that that scenario never plays out. We could make it so that Heisinger, after he inherits, has a horrible accident. Then Solvi would have the county already. And then when he inherits the title, um, that land would come underneath us. That's a way of dealing with it. But it's not really the way I want to deal with it. The way I would like to deal with it is making Heisinger our heir. If we make Heisinger our heir, he inherits a duchy, and then the uh, formula for what happens changes, because he's inheriting a different level title. So he's inheriting a duchy level title instead of a county level title. So, Solvi, when he dies... Oh, sorry. Um, so, if Heisinger has the title, and Solvi has a, a county level title, um, when Heisinger dies... Uh, Solvi will inherit the duchy, and that being his highest level title will then mean that he gets everything for the duchy and all the current lands he holds, which is exactly what we want to have happen. We don't want land to leave the duchy that we're creating. So, with that in mind, I know we're, we're kind of going a little bit convoluted here, uh, but with that in mind, I would love to change to a succession law that would allow us to make that happen. That succession law is, as we talked about at the start of the series, Scandinavian elective. Now, um, right now, Scandinavian elective is effectively us just getting to pick who we want to inherit this title. Because um, there aren't that many people who can vote, and our vote counts for the most. So, we would love to do that. The problem is, we need a lot more prestige. We need to effectively double our prestige. And that gets us to what we're doing today. Today we are figuring out how to get our prestige number from 777 to 1500. My plan is simple. First, we raid. We go and get ourselves a lot of money. Then, once we have a lot of money, we're going to come back and we're going to hold a really big party. That party is going to get us prestige. That prestige will then be used to allow us to change the succession law and everything will be great. Now, I haven't spent a lot of time with Elective in this game, but I believe it still will leave our first son with land in our current state. Because I believe what will happen... Now, I could be wrong about this because, I, again, I haven't spent a lot of time with um, succession laws, but I'm just telling you what I think will happen so that if it doesn't, you, you know what I was expecting. Um, what I think will happen 
is we change to Scandinavian elective. Our second son is set as our heir. He will inherit the duchy first, and then I assume the rest of the land will be partitioned out via Confederate partition law. Like, he'll inherit the duchy and the capital of the duchy. So currently he'll inherit um, the duchy and this bit of land right here. Then he will inherit one bit of land as he is due via Confederate partition, and his brother will inherit one bit of land as due by Confederate partition. That's what I think is going to happen, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how it all plays out. Anyway, uh, we're going to go hold a party, but before we do that, maybe we should go petition our liege. It's not actually that long a trip, so it's probably worth doing. So, petition liege. It does cost us a little bit of prestige, but... We could potentially ask our liege to send bailiffs. What would be nice about that is that will increase uh, control in some of our counties. If it can do that, then we're going to have more troops, we're going to have more money, and then it's going to make raiding some larger targets a lot easier for us. So, uh, let's go in here and petition our liege. I'm going to ask you to send some bailiffs. I believe we do actually have to go on a trip. Uh, currently, it's dangerous. Uh, do we want to put in a caravan master? Suppose so. Uh, we're not really after speed here. I think going for the 24 travel safety seems pretty good here. Let's put in a scarp into that role. So he can be our caravan master. It's now not that dangerous. There's a medium chance of danger here. But we'll take a medium chance of danger in a single province. I think that will be fine for us. We also get a little bit of piety for visiting, because this is a temple. And we get martial lifestyle and learning lifestyle experience, which seems good to me. Let's go. A fresh start. All packed and proper, we have finally come to the point where we can start our journey from Avenanma to our destination in Upland. Fantastic. We have arrived. I'm escorted into King Bjorn's throne room, where he beckons for me to approach and address him. I carefully describe the problems my fiefdom faces, resistant to my authority and beset by vagabonds, and request assistance in restoring order. After listening to the speech, he frowns and rebuffs me. I apologize, but for the good of Sweden, I must refuse your request. So I can say, hear me out, or alas. Oh, I'm not taking a renown hit here. Oh, wait, no, that's him taking a renown hit. Oh, that's fine. Um, I'm going to see whether we can get him to do it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the prestige hit. I think we're okay here. King Bjorn thinks for a moment, then cries, Rikulfer, I require your counsel in this matter. The nobly born spymaster steps forward eagerly, clutching his robe. Yes, this a most delicate affair, my lord. Ilva, the king's caravan master, watches quietly from the sidelines. Perhaps I could appeal to her diplomatic nature. The king turns back to me, his attention already moving elsewhere. I need to do something. So I can try for a intrigue challenge or a diplomacy challenge. Let's go for a diplomacy challenge. Okay, let's do it. King Bjorn is unconvinced. It didn't work. Oh well, we tried. The Hermit. A grotto emerges from the vegetation like a stone arch in a cathedral. On its entry, there is a small wooden table in a stall. Someone has left a lantern burning on it. Careful, my liege. Scarp holds his arm up in front of my chest. There are bandits in these lands. You're quick to make accusations. A dimly illuminated figure stands in the entrance of the cave. I'm merely a hermit. And you? Well, you carry the title of the Jarl. So we can try and recruit... Uthra, if we wanted to. Uh, she's 76 and not that good. Okay. Please tell me about my future or let's just go. Um, tell me about my future. The hermit takes a second before replying. She gets up and waits until I follow. There's some herbs scattered around and what seems to be a rudimentary bed. She turns to me when we're away from my entourage and with an oddly deeper voice replies... You shall find that who seeks. Okay. Uh, so that gives us some piety and we lose some stress. This is fine. Uh, traveling through the sometimes harsh environments has invigorating effects on at least my state of mind and vigor. 
As I glance over at High Chiefess Thordis, my wife, however, she does not appear to be doing quite as good. Her movement is laboured, her breathing heavy, and spontaneous bursts of coughing ripple through her body. Clearly, she is not well. So you can rest and let her fully recover for 21 days. Just look at, by the way, how close we are to her destination. Um, okay. Or we can say it's just a little cough and she develops, she could develop pneumonia. We'll rest and let her recover. That's fine. It's not that big of a deal. Oh, okay. Uh, my spy master has come to me with grave news. Somebody's trying to kill somebody. There's a scheme to um, murder Gormer. Do we know who's in it? Do you know anything about it? No. All we know is it doesn't have an awful lot of strength behind it. Angerman Land has some even more negatives than it had before. Okay. Uh, cool. So what we did there is basically nothing. We got nothing. We achieved nothing. But hey, it was worth a try. Oh, by the way, there is one other thing that was suggested uh, for us to do, which was grab some concubines, because that will, I believe, help us with our, yeah, with our prestige, because we're under our concubine limit currently. Uh, that's currently causing us a negative. So if we get some concubines, we'll get more prestige. Um, I believe if you get noble concubines, you get a positive to prestige. So maybe we'll try and look for some of those in our raids, uh, because that could potentially be good. The negative is I think that children of concubines are still in line to titles. So if we were to get a son from a concubine, they would still be in line, which is annoying, but we wouldn't be losing that much land either way. Right. Um, have our troops had a chance to reinforce? A little bit. So we have about a thousand troops. Where do we want to go? Uh, you know what? Let's raise the raiders first. Yeah, let's... let's um I need to move these guys over here. Well, I don't have to, but I'm going to. Right, and then we'll raise them as raiders, and we'll see um, see where we can raid. Because I want to use this so I can then see... Uh, also open that so I can re-click it. I just want to see where it's been raided along here. So this place hasn't been raided. How many troops do you have? You have no troops, and you're currently unraided. All right. Uh, I mean, you don't have a lot of loot left, but... Let's make our way down here and see what we're working with. Thurun's first teething. With my leave, my daughter Thurun and her wet nurse parade into my chamber. Ulfielder poses like a herald and proclaims, My liege, you witness a monumental occasion. Thurun has a mighty gift to offer you. She nudges her forward. Go ahead, Thurun. Tell him. Father, I lost a tooth. My daughter proudly presents her toothless smile, handing me a pouch with the fallen tooth inside. You'd say lovely, but keep it as a good luck charm. So she gets to keep it, and we lose a ton of stress, which actually no knocks us down the stress level, which is nice. We can give her money, or we can say I don't have time for this. I will let her keep it, because it seems the best for us, and it gets us a little bit of prestige as well. Okay. So Alberg is currently attacking them. That is a problem. Um, What's the war for? Defending against Yaland in the Yalander conquest of the chiefdom of Lubis. Ah. Yeah. So, that's their full army. We're probably not going to be able to raid here, unfortunately. Let me just see what we got. Could I raid Yaland? I mean, all their troops are here, right? Surely I could just drop in on their capital and do like a little raid. Hmm, that's an idea. Let's drop our troops in here raid a little bit. I have been told by the way that apparently le um, it's about six days to embark, so if you leave six days on this, you should be able to leave with the full loot amount, because you still loot while you're leaving. Which is kind of interesting. Obviously finishing it is still useful. Let's try that here, so I said that I'm going to leave there, right? As he says, it's going to be 30 days for us. Are we still raiding now? We are. Oh, look at that. Okay, it might be th six days between provinces. But yes, so we do actually get to finish raiding while we do that. That's cool. Okay. Let's head up to Alberg. And just uh, raid a little bit here as well. Uh, you've just won a war. Your neighboring 
uh, oh, sorry, your neighbor High Chieftain Vigu. So where is High Chieftain Vigu? Okay, so he holds the land up here. Uh, has won against this person in this person's conquest of some land. Okay, so we don't need to worry about that at all. That's fine. How's the war down here going? They just won the war. Okay, uh, get out of there. Yeah, we want to get out of there as soon as possible. So we do still raid. Which is nice. Wait, does it finish raiding and then go? Is that why it's taking the extra time? It does finish raiding, then you go. Oh, okay. Never mind. So it doesn't even matter. It'll finish raiding and then it'll embark if you want to do it like that. Okay. That seems interesting. Let's head down this way. Uh, my daughter-in-law, Loth, has given birth to a, uh, a daughter. So it's another child of Heisinger. Okay. Oh, they're now raiding it? Okay, well, there you go. How full are we? We've got like another uh, 70 we can get. I think raiding uh, East Francia is probably a bit much. Although, they are currently at war. So maybe we could just sneak in and raid like a little bit up here? Yeah, how about we sneak in a little bit here? Have a look for troops and then maybe uh, do a little raiding. We should also apparently raid uh, temples and things. Something I forgot to do. Because obviously... Oh, actually it's this land up here I want to raid. Um, because obviously when you're sieging a bit of land in a war, it's only the uh, castles that matter. But when you're raiding, you want to take everything. Oh, Solvi died. Uh, this guy, he was married to my courtier. Who is now ill. Okay, he was murdered though. Uh, Oldfielder doesn't actually give us anything anymore. We could marry her out of our court, I suppose. Given she doesn't give us anything and she's ill. Colbjorn? Yeah, let's do a marriage and get them this person out of my court. Right, we need a new chancellor. Uh, our options are not fantastic. I did forget we do have a vassal now, however... It doesn't really matter whether he likes us or not. He's not that good. Uh, our player Aaron Stewart could fill the role there. Let me just see how good this guy is. He could definitely... Yeah, he could be my steward though, which would actually make him like us. Yeah, let's reassign my player Air, And then this guy can be my steward. Yeah, that'll work. Oh, we have a marshal perk. Overseer gives us extra stewardship, uh, marshal, and control growth. Let's grab that. That now means that we should be gaining a lot of control in these two bits of land. Yep, so we are going to get a lot of control there, which is going to give us more and more troops and more and more money, which is what we really want. Okay, uh, it looks like this guy has actually decided to raise up his own troops to fight us rather than his liege's troops. He doesn't have that many. Wait, so who's this? Duchy of Angria? Oh, he has a, he has a liege. Okay, get out of here. Uh, how do I say don't stay in raid? Uh, yeah, no, cancel the raid. Um, can I leave? Doesn't actually appear to be letting us leave. Look at that. It's waiting for us to finish the uh, raid before we uh, leave. Interesting. Can you not cancel them? Am I going crazy here? So, how long does it say it'll take us to get off? 30 days to get to sea. That was the same as last time, I suppose. Hmm. Um. Hmm. Interesting. We'll need to try that again. I guess we're going to have to fight this. Oh, we can lead the army. Yeah. Which is even better for us. We do have better troops, I think, is what it's going to tell us here. But they have more troops. Can I see this? I'm just trying to see what what the uh, it's the wrong tooltip. What was the chances in this uh, battle? Nope, will not tell me. All right, well, <laughs> yeah. You see, it doesn't look like we're actually leaving. It looks like we're waiting till we finish the raid, then leaving. Okay, now let's have a look. So our Vikmen are being countered by their light horsemen. However, our Bondi are countering their light horsemen. And our Varengian veterans are countering their pike, which is great news for us. Okay, we have better, um, yeah, better advantage, which is fine. And we have more champions, who may also be better. 
Neighboring ruler lost a war, so that's Vastaman land lost against uh, Upland over here in a conquest. Okay, that's fine. Back over to this battle. We are still winning. Scheme at court. Somebody's trying to kill my wet nurse. Not a huge fan of that. Vigu, who lost the previous war, has now lost in a war against someone else as they uh, opportunistically grabbed a title off of them. Okay. Hey, we won. Look at that. So we lost 147. They lost 800. Our troops are actually pretty good. I just want to check this again, right? So it still says 30 days. Yeah, so it definitely finishes the raid and then and then they leave. That doesn't seem right. That seems like if I tell them to leave, they should leave. I wonder if there's a way of telling them that you, no, no, really, I want you to leave kind of thing. Let's head to the city holding and grab that because there's no point in running now. They've already attacked us and we won. Okay, so we got 22 days left. If I go into here, this is going to take 30 days. What if I do a shift click? Control click. Shift click. What if I move here? It still waits. It waits even if you're just walking through. Yeah, I guess you can't cancel raids. Huh. Interesting. I wonder if it's always been that way or if they changed that at some point. Because I don't remember that being the way last time we did raiding. But last time we did raiding might have been years ago. So who knows. Uh, I do want to raid this even though it's got no loot. The reason I want to raid it is because we might get a raid event. So let's grab whatever it's got on it. Okay, that's fine. Um, I want to head to start. Could do. Could head around here. Let's double check. So this is all underneath the same duke, which is good. We've already defeated them. Um, this guy doesn't have enough troops to fight me. And these guys are still in a, uh, a war. Yeah, okay. Let's continue uh, causing uh, problems over here. Okay. Hey, your sparring grounds are finished. We should head back now, grab extra troops. A lonely doll. Flame and screams surround me instead as my army plunders for valuable goods and prisoners. The acrid stench of burning flesh fills the air and I feel a beautiful cocktail of blood and dirt drying on my face. Then I see, among the wreckage, a small doll cast aside in the dirt. I feel compelled to look at it. Its small button eyes and hand-stitched smile remind me of the innocence waiting for me back home. Even caked in mud, its soft hair feels so delicate in my hand. I can't help but think that this would make a perfect gift for one of the children at court. So I can bring this to Ingfrither, my daughter, or I can bring it to Thorun, my daughter. I'll bring it to my eldest daughter. Okay. Uh, we could head to Bremen if we want to. Okay. Uh, I suppose. Have we captured anyone, by the way? We have. Okay. Although they they were per they were previously captured, like in the war. We'd head back to Lundberg. We wanted to. Uh, have you managed to reinforce your troops? No, this guy. Have you managed to reinforce your troops? A little bit, yeah. Actually, you know what? I think it's time to leave. Let's let's cut our losses, head back home. Cool. Okay, we learned a little bit about raiding there, and a little bit about the strength of our troops, which is apparently very good. Our caravan master just died. Uh, he succumbed to a fatal uh, apoplexy. Okay, well, uh, I don't know if I've seen that message pop up before, but um, it seemed like natural causes. That's fine. Uh, cool. Hey, we got our money. We got our prestige. We're about 500 off where we need to be. Apparently, we got raided while we were gone as well, which is not ideal. At least, I think we got raided while we were gone. Okay. Uh, let's disband our troops. Can we raid uh, Finland? Probably, right? That seems like a good idea. Is there anything I can do? I could hold a grand tournament. Also hold a feast. That would give us some prestige. It does cost a little bit much though, generally. But let's see what we can do with a feast. 
apparently this is a great place to hold one because it's got gathering halls. Okay, so let's say I held a feast here. And we went for like the lowest cost feast we could get. We get a 16 cost or 16 cost feast. Okay. Let's say I went for one that just had a lot of prestige gain. Okay. Good. Um, oh, we got new things here. We can spread legend and espouse legitimacy. Huh. If you have if you have a legend or if you have the Sons of Our Fathers perk. Okay. Cool. I think recreation is fine for what we're doing right now. How dangerous is it to get there? It's a little dangerous. We could probably put in charge Asa here. Let's put her in charge. That seems good. How many guests am I inviting? Uh, I suppose we could invite everybody. That seems fine. There's 60 days at the most. Yeah, let's host a feast. Right. And off we go. Of travels to come. Journeying through a, a Yomala, Yomala uh, I pass by a particular or a peculiar looking tent splayed open with yet more peculiar looking occupant inside. Okay, uh, come in, almighty oh Jarl. I can tell you, you have many miles to go, and I can offer you a reading of your future travels for a modest price. The strange man has piqued the interest of my entourage, but am I willing to pay for a reading? Hey, it'll lower our stress if it's good. Let's pay for a reading. Our travels bode well. Fantastic. Uh, familiar trees. Have we seen that massive tree before? I swear we're going in circles, my caravan master, Ulfrither, shouts. Perhaps she is right. We've seen no sign of getting out of this forest in hours. Are we even still in Ostamer? Uh, the dense tree cover makes it impossible to tell the time of day or even the direction we're heading. At this rate, we'll never make it to Angoman land. Um, I know exactly where we are. We can basically just go for it. Find a local guide. Okay. And that recruits a local guide to our entourage. Or send some scouts ahead. Uh, so I want someone to find a local guide. Okay. This seems to be working for us. The Metal Man. Truly, a stroll through Medalpad is a gift from Ymir. The tranquility of this place is suddenly and abruptly broken by furious grunts and clattering of armor. Hark, get me out of this metal prison. My squire took offense at my manor. It even goes so far as to call me heartless and has abandoned me. Whatever this strange man did could not have been enough to justify being forever stuck in his armor. I could, of course, have someone help him, but is it truly worth it? So we try and get some money out of him. We can try and um, get him recruited. He's not really good enough for that, though. Or we can leave him to his fate. It is going to be stressful to leave him. Um, I will get some money off of him. And we'll take the stress hit. Dark thoughts. Uh, well, I'm not going to be a drunkard. Because that's how nearly all of my characters die. Like, if they're a drunkard, they die immediately of being drunk. Uh, we could lose 15% monthly income or just gain some stress because we're about to lose it all at a feast. That seems like a plan. Making time. Servants run across the hall, bring the final decoration. Some of the guests are yet to arrive and I indulge myself with delicious drink by the fire. Ooh, I seem to have spotted some veal cutlets already. Wonderful, so we already got some prestige. The guests are gathered in the great hall, lords and ladies from near and far reaches of the realm. I must admit that not being able to bring weapons detracts from the appeal of a celebration. The mood is bright and spirits are high as the feast begins. Welcome, friends. Tastefully insulting. As plate after plate of food is brought into the great hall, an unmistakable smell reaches me and I smile. That is my that my dull champion, Prother, is sensitive to almond is something I sadly forgot to tell the cook. I bid you all welcome and pray you'll find the food to your liking. We can force him to eat it or we can say his face as I save him from food is definitely to my liking. Yeah, we'll get a hook on him and a little extra prestige. I did everything I could ensuring that Ulfielder and Bertich would be as far from each other as possible. But it was not enough. Now they have come to blows in the middle of my feast. One of my guards is close to the brawl and looks to me for the order to intervene. Okay. Uh, who are these people? 
You're my courtier, you're my... Oh, you're just a wandering person? Get out of here, wandering person. Yeah. Yeah, I don't care about wandering person. Hidden meaning. The guests are laughing and chattering in the noisy hall, making it hard to focus on the gruel in front of me. I draw lines and engagements in the greasy sludge as I think of ways to counter various battle plans. For the heavy infantry holding exactly here, I got some martial lifestyle experience. Disaster strikes. My lord, the wine. We cracked open the next barrel. It's gone bad. It's all gone bad. The feast is still raging, but without the drink, the mood is sure to dwindle uh, at a cruel pace. Oh, I don't have any money, so... Dwindle it will. Uh, okay. Sometimes I feel like a stranger in my own castle. I can't help but notice the odd looks my courtiers give me. The ease that fills any room I walk into. What's happened to my life? Why am I not welcome amongst my own people? And just accept the stress. Become a witch or drink. I will accept the stress in the hopes that I lose some. Few candles survive after the last of the guests have left. I can he hear a pair of servants letting out sighs of relief after the doors close. The food is still warm on ceramic plates. Soon word will reach every corner of the realm and every noble worth their salt will know that my magnificence is unparalleled. With everyone headed home with bellies full of exotic delicacies, I'm proud to say that the feast was a success. Nevertheless, I'm still grateful that the endeavor, or I'm still grateful that the endeavor is over for now. So we get a bunch of prestige. We're already at the number we need. We got some legitimacy, which is quite nice. We get some progress towards eager reveler, which I guess means we might have it. And then we get great banquet, which gives popular opinion and development growth here. Okay. Finish the feast. Do we have eager reveler? No, we don't. Okay. So it meant we had progress towards getting any level of it. Okay. How's control looking? Oh, this one's almost uh, full up. Yeah, that's good. That's 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 good. We're getting some reasonable stuff out of these things now. A duel demanded. I'm Einhir of Upland. I bested dozens of men in combat, and honestly, all those fights were dull. So here I am on this road looking for someone better than me, someone I can learn from. If you can best me in combat, I will become a valuable and loyal servant. And so, on this day, I demand to meet one of you in a fair fight. Okay. Uh, we are worse than him. Well, I don't know. Let's see. We could send Rother after him. Yeah, you know what, Rother? Defeat him. I in here won the fight. Oh, well, that's not good. Vigu won another war. He, I guess someone else was trying to be opportunistic. We have arrived home, I think. Yep, we are now home. And it is time for us to change our succession law to Scandinavian elective. I will now vote for Heisinger. He is now my player heir, and he inherits what? Let's have a look at succession. Oh, okay. So that's not quite what I thought would happen, but that's it makes sense. So, Heisinger is going to inherit the duchy. However, on the county level, confederate partition still takes place. So, he still will get one title. Ingvar will get the other two titles. He will um, purely get the um, Jarldom, though. Right? So it's going to be Jarldom goes to him because he wins the vote. And then confederate happens as it would anyway. So this guy gets the two that he's, in, he's by rights getting. And this guy gets one that he's by rights getting. So I guess if we think we're going to die, we should give Heisinger our best title. Because then, uh, that'll be the that'll count as the title he's inherited. Okay. Interesting. Uh, and obviously, uh, everyone's voting for him. Who matters? Because, well, you know, we have the highest vote strength. Although it looks like Ragnar is voting for him as well. So, that's fine. Cool. Well, that seems like a good moment to end the episode. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.